the last full moon of the year happening on December 26th, 2023 in the sign of Cancer. So we now have the sun in Capricorn, the moon in Cancer for this particular full moon. Uh, the sun has just moved into Capricorn. We just celebrated solstice. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, it's the shortest day of the year. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it was the longest day of the year. Sun in Capricorn. So this is worthwhile talking about this axis. Um, maybe before I do that, let me just set some intentions for us and what I hope to achieve in this conversation or I don't know, to bring through, give you. Uh, it's almost like, what are the greatest things that we can do during this full moon energy before the end of the year. You know, to me, this conversation is also, uh, we're in this moon cycle. Um, so if you watch the new moon video, we're in that cycle. And I talked a lot about this whole cycle that leads us into 2024. And it's like, how can we catch that wave, right? This wave of a full moon, full moons are culmination. They're possibly something being illuminated that we maybe didn't see before. And so you can kind of feel into that. That's kind of cool being that it's on the 26th, like the culmination of the year, things being illuminated that we maybe weren't seeing before. We also have Mercury in retrograde, which is brilliant. This is brilliant, right? This is maybe one of the themes. I'll, I'll point out the big, the big powerful themes. This is one, um, is that with Mercury retrograde, we've got this awesome opportunity to really reflect on the year um, in a way that is supportive of our expansion, right? Because Mercury is retrograding through Sagittarius expansion. We also have Mars conjunct Mercury. This is good, like this is good. So theme number one, let's, let's do it like this. Theme number one, your expansion. You know, what is it that you may want to spend time on during this full moon? Thinking about your growth, your expansion. You know, who are you becoming, right? Uh, what is the greater sense of self? Who is it that you will become um, if you are, I don't know, like living more, more as yourself, right? Like more as yourself. We've also got this North Node, South Node. I'll talk more about this in the 2024 astrology video when I get to that. I don't know uh, when that's coming. Maybe I could talk a little bit more about that toward the end of the video. But uh, we've got this North Node, South Node for all of 2024 and currently pointing at Aries. So North Node is in Aries and that's all about self, you know, self, your unique self. And so really coming back to this present moment theme with this full moon and really feeling into, okay, if I were to step into more of my authentic true self, right? If I were gonna like blow up the upper limits, if I were gonna take off the, the masks or the conditioning or, you know, the good opinion of others, right? If I was just to like shed all of that, you know, what is my expansion? Who are you expanding into? That's such a beautiful reflection right now. And now here's the, the other brilliant part is with the sun in Capricorn, it's not only who am I expanding into and get all dreamy about it, right? Cause that's really easy to do. Like, ah, oh, dreamy, you know, like not gonna ground it in or make it happen. But the beautiful part is that this Mercury also, it's two signs that it's retrograding in, it's Sagittarius and Capricorn. And we've got the sun in Capricorn for this full moon. And so it's like grounded, you know, it's grounded. It's also, all right, so what are we expanding into and what are the frameworks and the structures, Capricorn? What are the, uh, like what's the schooling that I might need? What's the up leveling? What are the skills that I need to acquire to become this? Like what are the tangible physical things from my environment, from my life, my, you know, like my daily life uh, <laughs> schedule routine, all of those things kind of fit into there. And I love that it's so supported. So that's kind of theme number one that I would say. There's one aspect that I want to weave into this that supports that. And it's that, I just want to make sure I get this right for you all. Um, it's that Saturn is trying, Saturn's in a really beautiful aspect 
to this, to the sun and moon, to this full moon. So Saturn is a little bit more of like that Capricorn energy, right? Where it's structures and it's foundation. So it's supporting, but let it support. This is the key here. Let it support your growth. Let it support your expansion. So the other aspect in this full moon that supports the expansion, right? Besides the Sagittarius energy of Mars conjunct, Mercury in Sag, the Mercury going retrograde in Sag, that's all about expansion, your expansion. And, and a little bit of like soul's growth. You can get a little bit spiritual in there too. It's like my soul's purpose, my soul's growth. That's all held in that energy as well. But Jupiter's also in beautiful aspects. Um, so Jupiter's also like Saturn, right? There's sextiles, beautiful, beautiful aspects to this full moon, right? So, I mean, we, we literally get like this double whammy of um, like Jupiter, Saturn, and Sag is Jupiterian, Capricorn is Saturnian, right? In that, in the retrograde that's going on. I love this. It's like a double whammy of expand and here's what helps to support the expansion. Here's the grounded reality of it um, to help support and help us to um, not get too full of ourselves, right? Because that can be <laughs> kind of the shadow side of Jupiter is too full of ourselves, you know, like it's like too, like what? No, like, okay, okay, dreamy dreamer, right? Okay, so that's the first theme of this full moon and kind of the first thing that you can sort of feel into as a really good practice, New Year's reflection, uh, ritual, meditations, mantras, things around that. Next theme, interestingly, I'm feeling uh, to talk about this Venus Neptune. Um, so Venus and Neptune, sorry, I'm just looking over here uh, at my screen. Venus and Neptune, they're in a beautiful aspect. So another like supportive aspect. And I like this um, for the standpoint of, uh, let me just feel for a second, uh, for the standpoint of mm, like love, you know, like higher love. So if Neptune is like spiritual, it's mystical, you can kind of feel into, and you feel into Venus, right? The feminine aspect, love, right? Goddess of beauty. And you can kind of feel relationships, right? And it's like higher level expressions of this around the holiday season. That's damn good, right? That's really good. So like sacred sexuality, door is wide open for that, like higher level love, higher heart practices. So this point right here, um, it's kind of like by your collarbones. You can just kind of feel it. You just kind of tap around higher heart practices. Like you can tap your higher heart and just call in higher level of higher level of higher level of super simple practice, super simple practice. But that could be really beautiful to support you in holiday gatherings in, I don't know, relationship up leveling, you know, just like to awaken, um, love that comes with less conditions, right? So we, I think we say unconditional love a lot and we don't really like give it meaning, but I like to say love without conditions, like love. I just I love for the sake of loving. Like this morning I was walking around town here with my partner and I was like, I just love everyone. I'm in, I just am in love with everyone. Um, and it's just like love without conditions. Like I'm not conditional about this love. It's just like walking around like, and just like love, you know, and it's like the holiday cheer and everyone's kind of got that like love vibe going on. Um, and so, you know, that might like, it's, it's a really beautiful aspect during, um, this moment in time during holiday season, if you're celebrating right now, and if you're not celebrating, celebrate yourself, right? Self love the moon in cancer. Let's go with this for a third theme. So two theme is like higher love. We'll go with that as the second one, like higher love. And you can reflect on that. You can feel into that. You can express that, whether that be with yourself, be with your pets, your loved ones, your lover, you know, just higher level love. So feeling into that as a theme that might resonate for you. Uh, this other theme, let's talk about the moon in cancer. <sighs> stunning, emotional. <laughs> so let's just kind of give the little bit of a warning. This could be a very heightened emotional moon for some of us. Um, full moons are already innately very emotional. There's a lot of water moving in a full moon, right? Full moons, they like move the tides more, right? So it's 
all of the waters moving, emotion and cancer is the emotional sign of the emotional signs, right? I love cancer. Uh, cancer brings a level of intuition that's really stunning. So that's something else to kind of feel into. Again, if this resonates for you is um, feeling into uh, like mother's intuition. So cancer is also um, very cancerian, is very mothering. It's a lot of mother energy, but you can feel into kind of mother's intuition or mothering or self care or care for other or letting love flow through ourselves in this form of really high level. I'm kind of weaving it into that mystical, right? The Venus. Neptune aspect where it's like higher level love, right? Can we like, can we love and care for self without the, without any strings attached? Can we love and care for other without any strings attached? Can we love and care for other without any judgment of, uh, we're over giving or we're self sacrificing or we're, you know, not giving enough or <laughs> we're not sacrificing enough. Like it's just never good enough. What if we could just drop it and just like let that love flow? So, Cancer is also just a really beautiful love sign. I keep going to my heart, right? There's a lot of heart, a lot of emotional depth in Cancer. And I would also say that Cancer is very womby, right? Like very womb wisdom. So, if you're feeling like medicine woman kind of things or womb wisdom, you can drop into that area of the body, right? Super simple. You just put your hands on your womb. This is a great practice. Uh, here's a practice I would super suggest. Um, our wombs, even if you do not have a womb, it's maybe been removed, like hysterectomy or for other reasons, or you weren't born with one, you still can tap into an energetic womb, like really and truly. You can also tap into universal womb, but you can just feel into your own womb and you can kind of feel that as like a creation center in your body. Right, it's create. It's a creation center in your body, and so energetically, like I've worked with men who've obviously never had a womb, and they're tapping into these energetics, and it's stunning. It's stunning, and they're getting these wisdoms about themselves, and these insights, and these intuitions about themselves, just tapping into their energetic womb. It's not a practice for everybody, but it's totally possible for everybody if it sings to you. So you can just place your hands like on your lower belly. It's a couple inches below your belly button. Soften and relax. So anytime we're going into womb practice, it's about feeling really safe. And this is this is Cancerian energy too. So feel into this for the full moon. It's about feeling safe, feeling emotional safety, feeling safe to express emotion, safe to feel, safe to go deep, safe to be really feminine, safe to really feel our intuition. And you can start to kind of feel into that maybe as I'm speaking through this. And you could do a practice just to come back to that part of the video and kind of help the you know, like let the words and the energetics of this moment in this conversation kind of take you deeper and deeper and deeper. And as you relax, it's relaxing and it's softening into the womb space. And it just give it time. Like this can take a lot, like patience, right? Time, softening, softening. So people are like cervical orgasms. I really want those. Like let's do it right now. This is the doorway into cervical orgasms too. Like this womb work and all these energetics that I'm talking about here, this is cervical orgasm pathway is softening. It's opening. It requires deep trust, right? Deep trust, deep, like emotional depths. Cancer is a beautiful sign to take us there. I just said cancer is a beautiful sign to take us to cervical orgasms, right? It's true. It's true. Cancer could totally be that archetypal energy of cancer can totally be the guide into womb wisdom, into cervical orgasm, right? Into this space. Um, so that's really powerful, our womb practices, womb wisdom, just dropping in and just being with your womb, right? So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, let yourself be creative here. Like that is the creation center. And so let the practice unfold or just let yourself be creative. Like you're just experimenting. You're just kind of, you know, like playing a little bit. But once you get into that space, you want to stay in the womb. You want to stay in the womb and get really curious. What's here? Are there, are there intuitions? What would my womb say to me in this moment? What would my womb say to my partner in this moment? You know, what can I do to take care of my womb space more? That's our lower wisdom center. 
That's our lower wisdom center. Um, so I'll work with lower wisdom center. It's not womb specific space. That's an aspect of lower wisdom center is the womb, right? There's Hara, Dantian, there's many other wisdom centers in the lower wisdom center. But that's, that's a very, very powerful, if you've ever studied anything around like the Hara, the Dantian, right? You, you know, like the lower seat of the soul, that's all lower wisdom center. Cancer full moons are beautiful for accessing lower wisdom center. And if you haven't done lower wisdom center practices, they're powerful. <laughs> they're soulful practices. They're like soul retrieval practices, right? And they open up a whole nother level of wisdom in the body, of deep body-based embodied wisdom in the body. It's really, really powerful. Um, our body wisdom activation workshop, if you're like, I don't know, like, where is that? How do I do that? Our body wisdom activation workshop works in that territory. Also, actually, this is even better uh, because it's free, right? Our body wisdom workshop, I think it's like around 50 bucks. This is free. But I can't announce, I can't, I can announce, maybe I can announce it. Can I announce it? I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to announce it yet. I'll announce it. Um, but I won't have a link for you the day that this comes out. It's not available until the 26th, but it's, we're doing a free week of mystery school. Yeah, the rewilding for women mystery school. So it's the feminine mysteries. And in this first week, it's totally free. Like we just love doing this for our community. Um, it starts January 1st. You can sign up on January 26th and you probably want to sign up on Jan or on December 26th, sorry, day after Christmas, Boxing Day. Uh, I love Boxing Day. You see the big smile on my face. I'm like, yeah. Actually, I just, I call it mystery school day, right? Like I love that we get to open the door to this um, on Boxing Day. Uh, yeah, and we will go into the depths. So we will work in that territory. So if you're like, I, Serena, this sounds really great, uh, but I don't know what you're talking about. Do, do the week of mystery school because we'll take, I'll take you right in there. You're guided right in there, right? And it's, it's, we just love holding that space for the whole of our community. I think the last time we held this particular mystery school, uh, there were 10,000 women who went through the first week of mystery school. So you are so very welcome to join us. I would love it. I would love to share it with you. Um, yeah, we'll put a link below once it's open. If it's not open, um, go sign up for the newsletter. Just go to rewildingforwomen.com and sign up for the newsletter. You'll be the first to know because we'll announce it as soon as those doors are open. All right. I'm crazy excited for that. Uh, I hope you join me. It's, uh, yeah, even if it's just, well, even if you just do one of the workshops, right? Even if you just do one of the workshops in the week of mystery school, um, it's going to be worth it. They're, yeah. <laughs> it's a mystery school. All right. Let me feel more themes another theme that we've got to talk about with this full moon is chiron is stationing uh, so when planet when something is stationing it's more potent and so chiron brings wounded healer uh, something that i'm watching is in april and again i'll talk more about this in the astrology of 2024 video when i get to that right we've got the week of mystery coming up um so we'll see when i'll get to that as soon as i can so stay tuned for that i want to get it out i'm hoping before the end of the year like that's my aim uh i'm gonna i'll give you my word i'm gonna get it out before the end of the year i'm gonna get it out before the end of the year yeah, I will. All right, so stay tuned to the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, now's maybe a good time to do that if you wanna make sure you get in on that. So let's talk about this Chiron thing in April. So there's a big, you're gonna hear about this from a lot of astrologers. I'm sure everyone's gonna be talking about this for next year. Uh, April 8th is an eclipse and Chiron will be on the North Node for that eclipse. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Eclipses are always about the nodes. They're always fated. It's the nodes of fate, right? They're very destined. The North Node is where we're headed. It's in Aries, right? This thing about self, which I talked about before, that's all of next year. Those nodes will be on that axis of self and other, self and other, self and other, but pointing towards self, not denying other, honoring other, but being true to self and what is my evolution a little bit more around true self, around authentic self, around my expression of me in this life at this time as this soul having this experience, right? It's stunning, it's stunning. It's gonna rock some of our worlds, especially April 8th uh, when Chiron is conjunct uh, the North Node, which is Wounded Healer. So 
Chiron can bring up, I love Chiron, <laughs> tricky and tough as an archetypal energy. We all hold it a tough part of self. Chiron's like the shaman, right? It's like the shaman of self. So it's your inner shaman. And oftentimes a shaman, before they come into their connection, their wisdom, their spiritual power, they go through, you know, a near death experience or they go through a dark night of the soul, like it gets rocky, right? And that's very, it's, it's very chironic, right? It's one way of talking about chiron is like, here your connection is on the other side of this wound. I don't like the word wound. That's kind of why I'm trying to give you this other analogy of the, the shaman, right? Because you open up to your wisdom and your magic and your gifts, but it's through this challenge. It's through some kind of a challenge in life. Uh, and that's, that's coming, but we might get little glimpses of that during this full moon. It's also giving us opportunity for healing. So that's part of whenever Chiron's activated, it's a really beautiful time for healing. Healing things that maybe we didn't know we could heal or maybe we didn't even see before. Some of this is really unconscious things like boundaries. You know, it could be that one of the things that we're coming into, you know, an up-leveled relationship with is our boundaries. This will be a big thing, big thing for next year, right? Boundaries, self versus other, right? That North Node and Aries, it's all about boundaries. What, you know, like where is my next highest level, healthiest expression of boundaries? And Chiron's all up in the mix on this. Um, so, Things like that. Um, this moon could bring about some healing or could kick up some of the deeper wounds, right? Even some of the stuff that we thought we worked through, right? It's all just a spiral. We get to go to like, especially with Chiron, it's like the next deepest layer of that thing. And you're like, ah, I thought I did this. And then, well, no, we're just at like the next deeper layer. So don't freak out if like some, especially we're around family in ways that we're, some of us, if we're celebrating with family, we're around family in ways that we're normally not. So that's gonna, you know, plug us back into some of that stuff. Um, but there's an opportunity for healing. Also, I see this opportunity for healing um, given, I don't know, I'm just gonna share this, given Hygieia's conjunct Saturn. I just like that, I, I like that. Uh, Hygieia's Kundalini goddess of miraculous awakening. And I really like the Jupiter. I just love where Jupiter's at feeling so much grace at the moment, just a lot of grace, a lot of like that miraculous, you know, like Hygieia energy of Kundalini goddess of miraculous healing. It's just like, and it can be so ease filled, the healing, the shifting, the transformation, alchemizing of fear into love or an old wound into, you know, a gift can happen really quickly and really easily. So a suggestion or an offering is to just turn the dial toward that right toward the new this is something huge i want to talk about i can't necessarily point to something in the astrology for this full moon but it's the new like point to the new point to the new your new wiring your new ways um i know we were on this kick for a long time like the new earth like we're bringing in new spiritual technologies the new earth and you know like <laughs> so I just want to remind us of that without getting too too off um, off this astrology conversation. I'll talk about that more in the 2024 video. So again, uh, stay tuned. Subscribe to the newsletter. We'll let you know when that comes out or hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Or if you're listening in an audio podcast, you can do that too. Subscribe just to make sure you don't miss it. It'll be the next episode that comes out. So I won't do anything between now and 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 anything out like it'll be the 2024 episode all right um so let me feel for a little bit i think i'm gonna park that and we'll dive more into that in that video um mercury goes direct on the first we've talked about this messenger of the gods right he's messenger of the gods and what he's doing in his underworld journey is he's going to visit sagittarius he's going to visit capricorn and again going back to that first theme that we talked about is he's bringing up here's your growth here's your expansion and here's what's needed for that and i love that he's going direct on the first so be ready everything will be direct come January 1st, except for Uranus, who will go direct 
I believe I wrote this down. Did I write this down? Anyway, sometime in January, right? Uranus, just a little side note, is also active during this full moon. This is a really like multi-layered full moon with a lot of different players at play. Uranus is active, so we can expect some of the unexpected. We can expect a little bit of that um, like revolutionary energy. I see that coming for next year, 2024. I can see I'm already rolling into 2024 conversation here, but this, um, you know, like revolutionary, what's the new AI? We want to talk about that. Some of the technology that's coming through um, for some of that stuff. Um, okay. Jupiter goes direct on the 30th. I love this. I love this. Like I'm really, really, really loving this end of year, this start to the year. I haven't seen astrology line up like this in a good long time where the first of the year, I talked about this in the new moon video. So if you haven't seen that, you can go back and watch. It talks about more of this, more of the Mercury retrograde, more of this Jupiter, more of, you know, the new moon cycle that takes us into 2024. So we'll put a link up here and a link below if you want to go watch that and just to dive in because it's, it carries us through this whole new moon cycle. But um, I'm loving Jupiter going direct um, in Taurus, right? Again, it's like we get to ground stuff in. Taurus is earthy, right? We've got all this Capricorn energy. We've got this Taurian energy and it's, it's earthy. It's, it's, we're able to ground it in. We're able to make it manifest. That's really how it feels to me is we're able to make it manifest, even though we've got Neptune who's adding some of the dreamer into things. Um, and I'll talk about this in a second because we have Mars, <laughs> God of War, conjunct the mind, Mercury on this full moon, squaring Neptune, right? Like that's, we could literally like grab onto a false truth. So feel for this and just watch for this. We could grab onto a false truth uh, something that we're like delusional about or something that we, it, it's been like we've been deceived in some way, right? So it's not just us deceiving ourselves or us being delusional. It could be that we're being deceived by something outside of us and we could bite into that, right? Like really grab onto that. That's like Mars energy of just like, and now I'm going to fight for this, right? And this is it and I'm going to fight for that. So just you just feel, just feel for that because on the flip side of that, it can be extremely creative with action, right? It can be extremely creative with action. Neptune opens up creative energy. It opens up creation. Like we get to, mind gets to expand. We can solve problems in ways that we weren't even thinking about possibilities of it. And, and just from a higher heart creation standpoint too, is this Neptune energy and being where it is with Mercury conjunct Mars, Mercury, the mind going underworld, like, okay, here's expansive, here's creative, right? For my evolution, right? Because we talked about this for your expansion. And if we can get Mars, the warrior behind it, to take right action. So that's maybe something to feel into is right action, right action, right action, right action. And my sense is that we've got so much grounded energy going on, like where Saturn is at. Because Saturn, I mean, Saturn, he's all, he's like the karmic lord, right? And when we're operating well with Saturn or that archetypal energy and self, he's so stunning for discernment. You know, he's like, that's not your highest good. What are you talking about? You know, like, what are you talking about this way? Um, so just like maybe slow down a little bit. If there's something I can share around this full moon. It's to maybe slow down a little bit. And when you really know, like lean into that full moon, intuitive knowing, right? Because cancers, they know. Like Cancerian energy, when it's online and we're tapped into it, we just know. We know what we know. We don't need to know how we know and it doesn't gotta be logical. We just know, right? It's like deep intuitive knowing. And so if we are really feeling that, heck yeah, like action, action, like creative action. If it feels like it's coming from high level love, like that Neptunian high level love, right? Your expansion, the highest good of the all of everything, let it fly. I mean, let it fly because it can be really stunning. It can be really stunning right now, really stunning. And so just kind of keep turning the dial to that. Let me make the stunning. Let me make the stunning. Let me do this in a new way. Let me operate in my new operating system. So you just kind of imagine 
um, you've got a new operating system. It's a new, it's an upgraded operating system. It's a higher level operating system. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but for whatever reason, like upgrading our operating system, if you're like, fuck, Sabrina, like I'm, I'm in for upgrading my operating system. <laughs> We're doing an in-person retreat. Uh, I don't think I've announced it on an astrology video. Just We just opened the doors two days ago from when I'm filming this, which is the 23rd of December here in California. It's only open to 24, so it's a tight, small, intimate, deep diamond circle. Uh, we'll journey for four days in person, and we're gonna work in this new energy. We're gonna work in, um, it's an energy that I'm kind of referring to as creation, energy right to me it's holy moly if I were gonna talk about it through astrology kind of links that I feel to it if if I were to possibly facilitate us through astrological points to access this what is a sacred power right it's a psycho spiritual power it's a sacred power that we can tap into that we can access it's in every cell of our body it's like working with Kundalini whoa that's crazy <laughs> Apparently, apparently, um, it's really crazy. Um, I love that. <laughs> that we'll just, we'll just exclamation point right on there. Um, but if I were to um, help us to access that, to become more conscious of it, right? So if Kundalini is like life force energy, this is creation energy. To me, how it's expressing and showing up um, in myself and the world and others that I'm that are working with this energy very consciously is that it's um <laughs> it feels higher voltage to me that's that's my experience of it it feels higher voltage it's like you have a thought and that's going to that's going to bring it into physical form it's like this capacity to um work in an energetic space with physical form in a way that you maybe couldn't before. Yeah, I'm staring at this plant over here. Like I could probably make this stinking thing blossom, right? Like if I really tapped into creation energy, if I really felt like that was the greatest intention for the highest good of the all of everything, I'm not just gonna make a plant blossom just because I think that that's a, you know, egoical Sabrina fun fucking thing to do, right? I'm gonna do it in alignment and that's where the sacred part of it comes in like it's got to be in that alignment anyways i might be losing ya <laughs> um, it's it's beautiful um but if i were going to astrologically kind of point to a doorway into this territory you know like if you're working with kundalini a doorway in is serpent energy a doorway in is hygia which I spoke about before, Kundalini Goddess of Miraculous Awakening, you can go through a lower form, an archetypal energy to take you to that, right? It's the doorway in to get to there. And so if I were to do it astrologically, it would be working with like the great attractor, right? It would be working with those, um, uh, that one doesn't feel right. It's like working in black hole energy, like a black hole will go astronomical or yeah. It's like a black hole will take you right into creation energy. That would be the doorway. And we actually just did that um, a couple weeks ago in a longer term rewilding training program um, where that was our access point was through a black hole and it opened up creation energy, which opens up every cell in your body to creation energy and it starts to teach you how to work with it. and. All of those things. Anyways, we're working with that at the in-person retreat here in California. So if you're like, I don't really understand this, but I know what you're talking about in some weird way, or I have a super call to that, or oh my gosh, yes, like that up leveling, that upgrading, that those, you know, that awakening to that spiritual force within yourself, that's happening um, at that retreat. We'll put a link below. It's a, it's half full probably. Um, I know that there were close there were 10 spots already taken out of the 24 when i'm filming this i don't know what it will be like when this podcast goes out or this video actually goes out okay gosh i got off on a tangent on that um let me feel if there's anything else that i want to no i think i just want to wrap it up and see if there's another practice um full moon gosh just like i think a practice that i'm really feeling into uh, and i'll share this here um, it's my personal practice right now and it's um, I have this like dedication at the moment to um, live more love more right live more love more every morning I wake up and I watch the sunrise and it's just this like 
focused mantra. Live more, love more, live more, love more, live more, love more, live more, love more. Align me with living more and loving more, living more and loving more, living more and loving more. Not just expanding to expand, but it's like in absolute alignment with my truest self, with my soul self, right? And if my soul self, if I was going to blow up the upper limits to live more, love more, live more, love more in my true authentic way, that is so fucking fulfilling to me, right? Um, how does how does my wiring change this morning? Like, what is it that I'm called to do this morning? What is it that today or this minute or this hour or this month or this week, what is it that I'm called to do that is in alignment with like that deepest, wildest, like most expanded place in myself? So if that practice sings you, you obviously don't have to do it at sunrise every day. That's just my thing. Um, you could do it anytime in any way, um, but just an offering to get creative with it. It's really supportive this moment in time with that expansion piece um, that I spoke about as one of the themes coming up right now. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. My gosh, just happy holidays if you celebrate right now, whatever it is that you're celebrating. I'm so grateful to be here with you. Excited to do that 2024 video. Very excited for Mystery School. Uh, sign up. Again, it's a free week. Just need to put your name and email in so we can send you all the access info and get you into the members area for that Mystery School. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Just a lot of gratitude. A lot of gratitude. Yeah, thank you all so much for making this happen. I hope to see you in the comments. I'm always there the first couple of days after a video goes out. Um, all right. So much love to you. Mwah.